Welcome back, students. Today we're going to talk about constitutional amendments. Part of our discussion is going to focus on the amendment process. And we're also going to use this opportunity to discuss the formation of the Bill of Rights and talk about some important historic individuals that were involved in that process. Let's first start with constitutional amendments in general. Constitutional amendments are formal changes to the Constitution. Uh, this is a, an alteration to the document of the Constitution and a change to how our government operates. And these sorts of amendments are important because they give us a way to alter our government to address changing needs uh, of the people. You know, our Constitution is well over 200 years old and a lot has changed in that time. The people who designed the Constitution understood that this would happen so they built in a way for the document itself to be changed and in that way the government that the document is uh, the foundation of could also be changed to address changing needs of our society and of our people. This change, type of change does not happen very often. We only have 27 amendments total. Ten of those are the Bill of Rights and the other 17 happened uh, over the uh, course of the years. So a change to our Constitution in the way of uh, formal amendments is uh, slow and happens very rarely. The rules for making amendments are found in the Constitution in Article 5. Article 5 describes the steps that have to be taken in order for the Constitution to be formally changed. And there are two steps that must be met in order for an amendment to become an official part of the document. The first step is the proposal step. This is where the idea for a new amendment is formally suggested. And the second step is ratification, and this is when the proposed amendment is approved and made an official part of the Constitution. There are two ways to propose an amendment to meet that first step. The first way is um, that an amendment can be proposed by a uh, two-thirds vote in both houses of Congress. So two-thirds of the House of Representatives has to approve an amendment as well as two-thirds of the Senate uh, if, that, if that idea is going to be proposed as an official consideration for a new change to the Constitution. The other way that an amendment can be uh, proposed is uh, at a national convention that is called by Congress when it is requested by two-thirds of the state legislatures. So two-thirds is your magic fraction to remember and remember that proposing an amendment happens at the national level of government. It can be done by the national legislature or it can be done by a national convention. Ratification is the second step and there's also two methods for it. A proposed amendment that has successfully gone through the first step can be ratified by either three-fourths of the state legislatures or a convention held in three-fourths of the states. So either the state governments or people in those states, uh, three-fourths of the total number of states, have to approve an amendment in order for it to be ratified. And this is what happens um, to every amendment that has become an official part of the Constitution. Notice that your uh, fraction here is three-fourths, and that ratification happens at the state level. Let's talk a little bit about the Bill of Rights. So the Bill of Rights is the first ten amendments to the Constitution, and they were added shortly after the Constitution was ratified. The people uh, who are largely responsible for the idea of having a Bill of Rights are the Anti-Federalists. This was a political group uh, of American leaders in our early days that were very suspicious of powerful government. They remembered uh, kind of how the government treated them uh, as colonists under Great uh, Britain's rule. And so they were very nervous about giving the government too much power and not establishing proper limits on what the government could do. So when the Constitution was new, they insisted that a Bill of Rights be included that spelled out things that uh, our national government could not do uh, to step on our liberties and our freedoms. So what the Bill of Rights does is protects uh, our civil liberties. 
by um, by stating that the that the, the government cannot uh, take certain things away, like freedom of speech or freedom of religion. There are several important historic individuals who played a part in shaping the Bill of Rights. The first and, and by far the most important is James Madison. James Madison um, played a um, tremendous part in not only creating the Bill of Rights but also the Constitution. When the Constitution was ratified, he took it upon himself to design the Bill of Rights. And he was in a, a really good position to do this because of his uh, previous experience in actually creating the Constitution. There are several things about his background that made him uh, was well prepared to understand what the Bill of Rights needed to include. His Virginia plan uh, was kind of the plan that, the, that formed the, the basic structure of our government. So he sort of knew how government would operate. At the Constitutional Convention, he not only was an attendant, uh, but he took extensive notes. He provided us with the sort of the fullest record of what happened at the Constitutional Convention. So he had written down essentially all the thoughts and all the ideas that had been discussed at the Constitutional Convention. And he, he sort of knew better than anybody else exactly what the government could do and what it should not be able uh, to do. Uh, and this made him well prepared to write and create the Bill of Rights. He also had uh, uh, quite a bit of inspiration from uh, his neighbors in Virginia, two important men uh, who were contemporaries of his, George Mason and Thomas Jefferson. These two men are important because of the ideas that they came up with that James Madison used as inspiration or borrowed when he designed the Bill of Rights. So George Mason, his contribution is um, the fact that he created a document called the Virginia Declaration of Rights. And this was a, a document that goes back a few years prior to the Bill of Rights and it of course applied only to Virginia, but it said some really important things. He created, uh, or it stated, I should say, the uh, idea that Virginians should have certain rights, and those included freedom of religion and freedom uh, of the press. And you can see, just by studying the Bill of Rights, how George Mason's ideas were included in uh, James Madison's document. The other person that played a big part in inspiring James Madison to include certain things in his design of the Bill of Rights is Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson's contribution in this case is um, creating a, a, a document uh, called the Virginia Statute for Religious Freedom. Thomas Jefferson was really serious about religious freedom. and He um, created this uh, document, Virginia Statute for Religious Freedom, to es establish a freedom of worship uh, in Virginia that stated that people should be able to freely practice uh, the religion uh, that they wanted to practice. And this document was unique because it was the very first time that religious freedom had been protected by law. We did that first here in Virginia, uh, again, a few years prior to uh, the Bill of Rights being created, and James Madison was able to use uh, Thomas Jefferson's ideas and include those in uh, clauses that protect religious freedom in the Bill of Rights. So this is a conversation that will continue on another day. Uh, make sure you have uh, your, your notes ready to go, and we'll chat about this stuff when I see you in class. Thank you.